The history of the breast archives began when I was 11. I was the one who got her period before anyone else and whose tiny little budding breasts exploded into knockers overnight. I had always marveled at women's breasts, appreciating my own grandmother's full bosom. But now boys and girls looked at me sideways, gawking. It was embarrassing and stressful. My name is Megan, and I've been a multimedia producer for 20 years. I cut my teeth in Boston, where I worked in news and publishing, and where I got my start in storytelling. And I went on from there to become an award-winning television producer for PBS. As a grown woman, I can look back at my own story and my struggles with my breasts with tenderness from my younger self. But back then I was a kid and no one, not the school nurse or my mother, talked to me about breasts at all. How they might get me more attention, how they might hurt, how boys might become fixated and want to touch them, <laughs> nothing. So I did what most kids my age would do. I swallowed my feelings and tried my best to conform. For me, conforming meant lessening their size. So I began a meticulous swaddling practice every day before school. It began with an itsy bitsy bra, a turtleneck, a button up shirt, and a sweater. Presto, I was flattened. This minimalization process worked very well. However, it had the unintended consequence of causing my nipples to invert or become innies. So not only did I now have bigger breasts than any girl I knew, but I was also deformed. It was devastating to be reminded daily that I had brought this upon myself. As I grew older, it was the inverted nipples that caused my greatest dismay. I worried my lovers would think I was misshapen and find me unattractive. I worried that if I had children, I wouldn't be able to feed them. In my mind, I had a major defect and was, on some rudimentary level, unlovable. Years passed and I learned to compensate for my secret flaw. It was quite a sad little dance and it truly influenced the development of my psyche because I felt imprisoned in my flawed body, which manifested itself as false confidence and guarded relationships. And then a momentous event inserted itself I went to Egypt, and while I was there, I climbed into the Great Pyramid where I had an intense spiritual awakening. As I laid on the stone floor, I began lifting up higher and higher into an infinity of space. But there was also something keeping me grounded in the king's chamber. It was a corresponding energy that remains sublimely visceral to this day. And then there was this strange message that breasts contain an ancient wisdom. I wondered, what does it mean? We had also visited the ancient ruins, so massive in scale and so beautiful and wondrous. The temples were dominated by women who rose hundreds of feet high as statues and chiseled human pillars. I remember being struck by the way their breasts were always exposed and how very different it was back in America. Seeing these towering topless figures felt refreshing and empowering. What have we been taught to hide? I wondered. At first, I didn't know what these breast-based messages and observations meant. But over time, I've come to understand it to mean that this is a place on our bodies that's connected with an infinite source. And by tapping into this portal of wisdom here, you can know yourself very deeply. This journey gave me a euphoric experience that changed me profoundly. As I flew home to the States, I decided I would interview women and ask them to share their histories with their breasts as young girls into adulthood so I could better understand what caused our culture to erase the female breast from its iconography and which in turn caused women to be silent about this part of themselves. At the time, I was working full-time as a television producer for public television. So arranging interviews and camera crew logistics and posing probing questions to complete strangers was second nature to me. With the scent of the Nile still fresh in my nostrils, I began to search for candidates to interview. Nine women came forward surprisingly quickly, agreeing to answer my esoteric questions and to also remove their tops and blouses at some point during the interviews. My objective was to invoke women's wisdom regarding their breasts and to invite it out of hiding. It was therefore essential that they felt they had nothing to hide. 
outside. The participants immediately grasped the premise. Being topless wasn't just about daring or boldness, but about asserting the right to claim and love their bodies and identities and to explore an integration of their whole selves. The stories they shared were fascinating, hilarious, alarming, rich in detail, and never dull. I was struck by the depth of their insights, particularly as they described the stages of their lives when they had felt disembodied and the ways they had rediscovered and reclaimed themselves. Each of their stories were so different, but the social settings in which they occurred were strikingly familiar. Most of the time, the shame or guilt these women had felt had been assigned to them in puberty, sometimes viciously. Revisiting these memories gave them a chance to shift their perspective, tap into a deeper self-knowing, and find closure. I listened wide-eyed, feeling my own stories emerge into the light. We had tapped into a suppressed treasure trove of stories and we're now discovering, all of us, that there is a strengthening softness within that's both universal and unique to us as individuals. I hope that this film can take you on a similar journey where you too will discover the power of our body's spiritual energy in relation to our own connection with the infinite source that guides us all.